children are wonderful. And those are one of the words that uh, Mr. Herschel Swinger threw out me one day and they just got stuck to me. 20 years ago, Dr. Swinger realized that when agencies and society talked about servicing families and children, that it really meant mothers and children. And it, there was a need for a specific targeted program to include father when we talk about servicing families. It started as one small program within the Children's Institute. And over the last 20 years, um, we've made it a movement, especially here in Los Angeles. If you changed the lives of the children, you had to first work with the mother and father. He wasn't concerned about ethnicity. He wasn't concerned about geographical location. He wasn't concerned about the education. He wasn't concerned about finances. He wanted a program that would specifically address fathers better engaging in their children's lives. It's part of a legacy, a legacy of being connected with uh, Dr. Herschel Swinger, who was a friend of mine and colleague, uh, and, and one, of the, uh, one of the partners in, in this work years ago. And so we made a commitment years ago that we would lift up the issue of, of the significance of, of fathers in the roles of families, in the roles of community, in the roles of, of, of leadership. I didn't even know how to be a dad, be a father. I had no idea even what to do, you know, or, or how to act. You know, and you know, the advice people give you, sometimes you go home and you're thinking about it all week. You come back to the next group and, you know, you want to hear more. It's like a saga, you know? So um, it kind of keeps people going in the midst of all the problems they're dealing with. Observing a father when he first entered our program, and this father is, in many cases, frustrated, uh, anxious, uh, has been misunderstood, and he sits around the table and hear other men that have experienced what he is experiencing when he walks in the door, and they begin to share their story. That father, at that moment, feels like I'm in the right place. It was definitely camaraderie there, um, like brothers, everybody in the group, uh, you know, they come there broken down and we, you know, like I did, and people pick you up and you build friendships because of that. One of the most important life lessons they learn in, in our merge groups is that um, being a father is not defined by anybody except yourself. Um, you get to decide what role you play in your child's life. Project Fatherhood or Men in Relationship group is a very unique group in that one, it's not a parenting education course. It very much is an open group. It's a group that really talks about vulnerability, transparency, men beginning to sort of honor each other's stories and narratives. So in addition to facilitating 20 groups here in Los Angeles, we also train other organizations to replicate our model. Um, with a goal that they implement Project Fatherhood within their own organizations. There's an expectation of what a father is uh, and what a man is, especially a man of color. Um, a lot of us did not have fathers or role models to, to mirror, and so we believe what society tells us we should be and how we should be. When what we know today is that's not true, um, and that although I can be the breadwinner, I can also come home and kiss my son on the forehead every night, uh, and that's okay. Through fatherhood, they've, they've taught me the foundations and the structure of how to be a dad, something that I never had. I grew up without a dad, and, and now I get to be a, a dad of my daughter, the dad that I always wanted. And I get to be that with, with my little girl now. So that's very, that's very important to me. Project Fatherhood has made a significant change over the last 20 years. Um, there's lots of work to be done, but we wanted to acknowledge the work that we've done around systems change, partnering with different systems such as child support and probation and the courts and DCFS to make life a little easier on both fathers and the children. To the extent that through the child protection system, we can bring fathers into the picture and, and make them an important part of their children's lives, and we're doing them a great service. Everything that happens in the Department of Children and Family Services focuses on mothers and not fathers. With the support of Children's Institute, our partnership with our juvenile court, fathers are now coming to the forefront far too late, but it's never too late to correct um, something that has gone terribly wrong. And we're excited now that we are including fathers and that we don't go forward with anything until we personally meet with the fathers and make sure they have visits with their children. And Project Fatherhood has made such an impact on me 
that is teaching me so much that I, I got my kids telling me they love me, they call me dad. I'm telling you, my daughter, I was the first one they called. She called and went into labor to make sure that I knew. I wanted to exchange this for them in front of the world. Over the years, I've seen systems change in that they became more father friendly. Uh, I've seen where places that did not have facilities for fathers to change their children's diaper or take care of them because of they had some type of accident. That's been a change because normally you don't see a diaper changer in a men's restroom. We're aware that it requires a collaboration of many different efforts. So we have to be involved in child support and the Department of Children and Family and Services and probation and LAUSD and healthcare. These are things that affect a father's life in a way that might not be addressed with a mere parenting class. Every father who is going, whether they're incarcerated, whether they're going through DCFS, whether whatever their circumstances are, has an opportunity to use resources to turn their story into a powerful message for somebody else. This, this thing, this program is very important because it breaks down all of us to one common denominator and that's worthy. We're all worthy. We all matter. Yeah, I think we're going to take a few minutes to pat ourselves on the back in the 20 years of fatherhood and then start the next quest. Um, we launched the Fatherhood Network this year. We've trained over 2,000 individuals representing over 100 agencies throughout the greater Los Angeles area. Dr. Swinger used to say, and I think a lot of people thought he was joking that he wanted a Project Fatherhood on every corner like a McDonald's. Uh, he wasn't joking, but I don't think he meant it in, in that way. I think he meant that in order for a fatherhood to be as effective as he wanted it to be and how he saw it, it would take collaborations. So it meant working with org organizations that do things that we don't. It means working with DV agencies and substance abuse agencies and TANF agencies. And so what we've done with the Los Angeles Fatherhood Network is brought all of those entities together so that although it's not a children's institute across the corner on Alvarado, it's an agency that has fatherhood involved in it. When I watch the fathers come every week, they're not waiting downstairs. They're so excited about being in fatherhood that they're waiting upstairs. They're talking and they can't wait to get in the room to start the groups. And, uh, you know, Dr. Swing would have loved that. If you just pay to the media, pay attention to the media, they make it as though one fathers are non-existent, don't care, don't want to be there, we can't find them. Yeah, you can, they're right here. And they've been showing up for 20 years. Men are not the enemy, that men are not the abandoners, that men are not those that, that hurt. But really, we can love and we can provide and we can embrace and we can heal and we can step up. I think out of all the services that I've done up to this point, being a facilitator with this group has made a big difference in my life. We're just doing what we need to be doing. That's what Hershel would say. I love my mother. My mother built the person that I am, the woman that I am, but my father changed the trajectory of my life. That's what my father gave to me. And he probably never knew. He died never knowing that he gave that, that, that fruit to me that was always in him, the person he always wanted to be, was born in me as father. I think the movement has had such an impact on the community, we begin to hear celebrities talk more about it. So much so that our president has backed Project Father. So it's, it's, it's a national movement. When we talk about 20 years, that's the long-term meaning. It changes the lives of the families involved, but on top of that, it changes the lives of all of us who are involved. I think that if you know where you came from and you know where you're at, then you know where you're going. And as long as I'm holding my son's hands and my daughter's hands, we're going somewhere. I'm often asked to describe Project Fatherhood in one word or one sentence. And I quite frequently go back to what Dr. Swinger said constantly. 
that doing this work, we're not changing the world. We're just making it the way it's supposed to be.